Hello, everyone. It's my great pleasure to be here. My name is Dina Kitabi. And I want to tell you about healthcare, and particularly how we can move from wearables to invisibles. So I'm really interested in automating healthcare. That is, I want to bring the care from the hospital and the clinic to the patient's home. And if you think about it, this is really important, particularly now, because we have aging societies. So many people are old. There are so many patients. And there are not enough doctors and nurses. So one way to automate healthcare is really to use video conferences between the doctor and the patient. I mean, we all know how to do this. But the problem, you can't really do this because you can't do it at scale. You can't have the doctor having video conference with all of his patients all of the time. That would be too much. And there are not enough doctors, not enough time. What we really need is the ability to monitor health in the home continuously. That is, you want to monitor the patient breathing, heartbeats, motion, gait, sleep, all physiological signal, detect when health is degrading, and alert the doctor so they can intervene and pay attention to the patient who needs it. But how do you do, how do, you do this? I mean, you might be saying, oh, but wait a minute. I mean, monitoring health at home is really cumbersome. Today, if you want to monitor something like breathing, you want someone to wear a chest band or a nasal probe. If you want to monitor sleep, you ask them to wear all of these sensors on their head and body and sleep with them. If you want to monitor falls for grandma or grandpa, you ask them to wear a pendant and push a button. And if you want to monitor a patient with Parkinson, you have to ask them to wear accelerometers and move with them. This is not a happy picture. You don't want your patients to be wearing these devices. What if somebody comes and tells you that we can monitor all of these things and many more without a single sensor on the person's body? This is exactly what my group at MIT does. We have invented a machine or device that looks very much like a Wi-Fi box. It sits in the background of the home, and it monitors breathing, heartbeat, gait, sleep, and many other things without a single sensor on the person, just using the wireless signal in the environment. Now, you, know what? you might be wondering, okay, how can, how can you do this? How can you monitor, how can I monitor your breathing, your heartbeat, you are sitting there without touching it? But if you think about it, you guys are here sitting in a sea of wireless signals. You agree with me on this? Wi-Fi, cellular, every single thing. Everything that you do affects the electromagnetic waves around you. You took a breath, it affects the electromagnetic waves. You took a step, changes the electromagnetic waves. And our device is smart. It sits in the background and uses machine learning advanced models of machine learning to analyze these electromagnetic waves so that it would know you took a breath or you moved or whatever else. In fact, it can monitor breathing, heartbeat, gait, sleep, and many other things. So I want to show you a few videos to illustrate this to you. So here you see the home and wireless signals spread inside the home they actually reflect of our human bodies because our bodies are full of water. And they come back to our device, which analyzes them using machine learning. Here, it would detect a fall and alert the caregiver via text, email, or a phone message. Let me show you some examples from our lab. Technology doesn't always work, even for MIT. So, so what we have here. Our device is going to monitor this person. Okay? So this red dot is where the device thinks this person is. But the device is not even in the same room as the person. It is actually in the adjacent office monitoring him from behind the wall. So imagine if somebody is monitoring us from behind the wall from a different room. But wireless signals traverse walls. And as he walks, you can see how the red dot is tracking him. 
Now remember, this is purely based on how the wireless signal interacts with his body. He doesn't have any sensor, no cell phone, no accelerometer. Tracks him pretty accurately, as you can see. So it turned out that if you can measure Oh. Turns out that if you can measure gait speed, you actually can measure very important health metric because gait speed is important for Parkinson, for multiple sclerosis, for sarcopenia, for so many of the emotion related uh, diseases. But also it turns out that it is a predictor of hospitalization in heart diseases like congestive heart disease or COPD. So today, you measure this in the hospital when the patient goes there with stopwatch, but you can measure this 24-7 in the home. What else can we measure? Sleep. Okay? Sleep is a very big problem for many people. Now, if you think about it, you can see why our device would be able to measure sleep. So the device sees a person as he walks to bed, when he stops tossing around in bed, when he steps out of bed. So we should be able to measure sleep based on, on motion, something called actigraphy. But it turns out that we can measure sleep much deeper than that. We can measure sleep stages. So when we go to sleep, our brain waves change, and we enter different stages, awake, light sleep, deep sleep, and REM, or rapid eye movement. These sleep stages are very important for sleep disorders. They are also important for a variety of diseases. For example, rapid eye movement disturbances are related to depression. The slow waves during deep sleep are related to Alzheimer's. Today, if you want to monitor sleep staging, what do you do? You send the patient. You send the patient to the sleep lab, and they put all of these sensors on his body and face and ask him to sleep like this. <laughs> okay, so, I mean, of course, you can see that he's not happy. Sleeping like this is not great. So what can we do? Let me show you our scenario. So this is our device. Transmit a very low power wireless signal, monitors the reflection using machine learning, and spits out the sleep stages throughout the night. It knows when this person is dreaming in REM stage. OK, what else can we monitor using wireless signals in the environment? So we can monitor your breathing. So this guy is sitting like you guys. And what you see here is nothing, but he inhales, exhales, inhales, exhales. And we ask him to stop breathing, to hold his breath. And you see the signal stays at a steady state because he exhaled, he did not inhale. So let me zoom in on this signal. So what you see here is the same breathing signal. These are the inhales. These are the exhales. And you see some blibs on the signal. These are not noise. These are actually his heartbeats, beat by beat. You can count them. So when we started working on this, so many people from the healthcare industry got very interested. And today, we have deployed with more than 200 patients in their homes. Those patients are in Parkinson's, in Alzheimer's. Uh, some people have depression. Some people have pulmonary diseases like COPD. And we are working with hospitals and actually foundations like the Michael J. Fox Foundation on changing healthcare using this device. I want to show you some of our results with the patients. So here I'm going to show you a patient who lives in an assisted living community. And I'm going to show you the difference between how the patient moves and how the nurse moves. So let's see this. So as you can see, the nurse is faster than the patient, but also the nurse is smoother. The patient is slow, but also he's wiggly. So what we do with this? So we deployed with multiple patients. Let me show you some results from our Parkinson patients. So you see the device up there. We call it the Emerald device. And what you see here is two hours of trajectory from this patient. So we take these trajectories, and we look at the life of the patient. 
So here, I'm taking those trajectory and plotting them on this graph in terms of what the patient was doing. And let me explain this graph. So every circle is 24 hours. Zero is midnight and 12 is noon time. The innermost circle is the first day of the experiment and the outermost circle is the last day of the experiment. This is eight weeks in the life of this Parkinson patient. And what you see here is that his life has changed a lot during these eight weeks. Like, for example, at the beginning of the experiment here, look at the blue, which is sleep. Look how bad it is at the beginning of the experiment. Very disrupted sleep. But as the experiment goes on, at the end, the outermost circle, the blue becomes less disrupted. So sleep is less disrupted. You see other things. You see all of that green stuff? This is the patient sitting on his chair doing nothing. So this patient is very sedentary, which is really bad for older people. You can see also, for example, here yellow at 8 a.m. in the morning, which is when the nurse comes to help this patient go into the bathroom to do his toileting and dressing. So he's very dependent on his nurse. Let me show, show you the impact of medication. So what you see here is the speed of the walking of the patient as a function of the hour in the day. So what you see is that there is an inflection point where his speed suddenly increases around 5 a.m. Can you guess what happens? Takes his medications. So you immediately see the impact of that medication on him. And let me plot for you the speed of his wife, which is, of course, she's faster because she doesn't have Parkinson, but it doesn't show the same inflection point. So you can actually see the impact of medication and start changing the dose of the medication and adjusting the medication for that particular patient. So how about breathing abnormalities? So here you see apnea. So the first thing you see the patient breathing, and then he stops breathing. This is apnea, and then breathes again and stops breathing and so on. So I want to end by going back to the beginning and asking you, what else can we do here with wireless signal? So you see that red dot? It tells us that this person location and that he's not moving. He's standing there. But it doesn't tell me whether he's actually standing or sitting. And also, as he moves, I was able to show you the dot moving with him. But you don't know whether he moves with his right foot or left foot. So let's see our most recent results. Okay. So here, the bigger frame is the, the vision of the wireless device, and the small frame is the vision of the camera inside the room. And as you can see, we get the full skeleton when he sits on the chair. The wireless device through the wall knows that he's sitting on the chair. He stands up. He walks. We see every single movement, which gives us much more information about motion completely without putting any device through wireless signals through walls. So if you think about it, what we did here is that we changed the vision. Most people think about digital health, about wearables. But note that there is a new thing. This is the invisible. We can just use the wireless signal in the environment to monitor health. And that is how I think we can automate healthcare. Thank you very much.